So in this screencast, we're going to be looking at using PCA to sort high-dimensional objects. So recall that PCA tries to maximize information retained when we project our data down to a lower dimension. Even when projecting our data set down to, say, one dimension, PCA will try to capture as much information as possible from the original data set. So what's unique about one-dimensional data? Well, it's a list, so it can be sorted. So if we have objects that can be represented as a high-dimensional vector, we have an opportunity to endow an order onto them. And now you can't see it, but I'm air quoting order. This order has nothing to do with one object being better or larger, again, air quotes, than another object, but instead has to do with an ordering that minimizes information lost. So let's try this with colors. Colors exist in three dimensions. Uh, the dimensions that I'm choosing are going to be uh, RGB, or red, green, blue. This example actually comes from a problem I had. I wanted to sort my books uh, like this. So I'm sorting books by color here. Sorting them by hand was going to be impractical. It would take a lot of time, plus it's actually really difficult to decide on an order for colors. So I took a photo of a subset of my book collection, sampled the color using GIMP, and then recorded the color in RGB. Here is the list of colors. There's 22 here, and I've normalized them to be between 0 and 1. I've also created a little helper function. Uh, that'll display the colors in, in an array based on their order. So let's take a look at that. So display colors, and I put in the array of colors. So these are the colors from up here. Now, they aren't sorted at all. Um, in fact, I, it would be sort of difficult to sort these. I would find conflicts. This is a weird purple one. There's a weird orange one. I guess I'd go like dark ones on one side, light ones on the other. It's not totally clear how to sort this. But you can probably do a pretty good job of sorting it. It's also pretty time consuming to try to sort these, even for only 22 colors. And the process is also very subjective. Likely your friend will have a very different ordering than you do. We'd like something objective, and that scales to potentially hundreds or thousands of colors. So let's visualize these colors in three space. As before I mentioned, they originally live in three space. So here they are in 3D. And so we have RGB. So here's what I need to do. I need to find a one-dimensional representation of each of these colors. That way, those colors can be sorted. Secondly, I need to determine some sort of ordering. Now, consider the following made-up example. An ordering that sorts based on the amount of blue in a set of books that are mostly green and red would be very poor, as a human eye has difficulty seeing blue vary across green and red books. Instead, what we want is colors that are distant in 3D to be very distant in 1D too. Similarly, colors that are close in 3D should be close in 1D too. Thus, I would like an ordering that maximizes the amount of variation when we project to 1D. This is exactly what PCA does, so let's do that. So I import PCA from scikit-learn. And I'm going to instantiate it with just uh, end components equals 1 because we're projecting down to one dimension. So these are the one dimensional representations of these three dimensional objects. And the shape should confirm that. Cool. So there's 22 colors, and they're one dimensional. So I need to sort these. And I'm just going to, I want the argument sort. So I want to know um, this object, where does it go? Or this first element, where does it go in the sorted array? And if that's confusing, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I were to do this, this should be a sorted array. And it is. Cool. So I want to take that these, these arg sorts, ix, and I want to put it into the original colors. So like this. So this is sorted colors based on one-dimensional representations of the colors. And let's display that. Cool, so what we have here is a 
sorted array of colors. There's, there's no human interpretation to it, but it's an ordering. So let's try sort of random colors now. So let's try 60 colors, and I'm just uniformly picking these over the uh, unit square, or subset of the unit square. And let's display these colors. Cool, so there's 60 here. It's actually probably really hard to sort these. I wouldn't really know where to begin. Uh, yeah, it would be difficult. Let's see what PCA can do. Uh, let's actually first visualize these in 3Space to get a better idea. So let's do the same procedure as above. So I project down to one dimension. I take the arc sort of this dimension, or this new data set. And then I put that back into the original color matrix. And we display it. Oop. All right. I need to cast it as one dimension. Cool, so I think this did a pretty good job. And it was very efficient too. So it seems like it's done like pinks on one side, blues on the other. It sort of dealt with the purples pretty well. Yeah, it's, I'd give it like a 80% considering how, how quickly it did that too. Now recall that this method of sorting is completely unsupervised. There is no better or larger color. PCA is merely finding the line in three space that maximizes the data's variance in one space. This line also happens to be what we wanted. We wanted different colors in 3Space to be maximally different in 1Space too. Now, I chose the RGB space. This was completely arbitrary. You could have chosen other color schemes like HSV, HSL, or CMYK. Uh, now, HSV and HSL are pretty interesting. They might actually produce better results, as they were first designed to be more intuitive and perceptually relevant than RGB. Interestingly, CMYK colors would live in four dimensions originally, unlike three for RGB. Now, on sorting colors, there's actually a better way to sort colors using the traveling salesman problem, but I'll explain that in a different screencast.